Hello again, welcome back to my channel. This is the Tone Deaf Monk, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the new Tantium Origin. Let's talk about the origin here for a second. This was a uh, loaner from uh, Canucks Audioholic, so thank you for that. Um, I was excited to listen to it because I, ne I never got a chance to listen to the oxygen, and I was figuring that uh, they would take all of the feedback and make the improvements, and this would be their claim to fame. So I was a little surprised. First of all, when it came out um, for its pricing, to tell you the truth. Um, and I'm on Linsoul's website right now, and they're, they're offering it for $259.99 USD. Now, this is the follow-up to the infamous Tantium Oxygen. And... Part of it, I've never picked that one up, and I honestly have never heard it. Um, and the reason I never picked it up and bought it, even secondhand or used, was that, well, it kind of got irrelevant with the fact of the, the Olina coming out, um, which used the same driver or one of the variants thereof, and we'll talk about that too. Um and uh, so with a arguably a better, more comfortable shell. Um, just talking about that for a second, um, I mean, it, it's well known that they had two or three silent revisions of the driver and the tuning in that. Uh, and, and you can understand why they wouldn't say something, Um I don't know, actually, would you or should you not say something that you've made improvements to it and you did change the tuning and the driver, so... And comes to a point, too, I mean, you have something that's popular and you bought a certain amount of drivers for that IM and it's no longer available, I can see why you'd have to outsource something else. But again, the, 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 the buyers should have known. And and if they did change something, they should have called it something else. That's just my feelings on that. So <clears throat> the and there was people who swore that the uh, that I am um, the oxygen was still better than any of the renditions of the Olina, and so have you. So let's go over some marketing speak. Uh, experience the fifth generation of Tantium technology with the flagship single dynamic driver, the DMT-5. Groundbreaking 10 millimeter DMT-5 dual magnetic dual cavity unit. The DMT-5 technology delivers high magnetic flux, lower distortion, and enhanced dynamics, elevating the audio performance with improved timber, a wide sound field, precise sound positioning, and superior separation. We're going to get into some sound in a bit. Um, talking about the cone, composite diaphragm mastery. I love marketing speaks. Origin boasts a meticulously designed composite diaphragm tailored for the DMT-5 magnetic circuit and acoustic cavity, balancing rigidity, rigidity, rigidity and flexibility. The diaphragm ensures exceptional vibration characteristics, resulting in high-performance dynamic response across the entire spectrum. <laughs> Waveguide innovation. All these things sound like you should give me 250 bucks. Uh, the Origin features a monolithic brass waveguide surface cover, utilizing low distortion waveguide technical units and high quality acoustic waveguide design. FEA simulation optimized geometry enhances the module Distribution leading to improved high frequency acoustic energy transfer and elevated sound quality. Man, you're speaking the speak, you better be walking the walk. Customizable 
customizable conduits for versatility. Okay, they're talking about the nozzles, right? Exceptional with a replaceable conduit design, Origin offers flexibility through three conduits, standard, dynamic, and light. Each conduit unlocks different resonance effects, providing users with a customizable listening experience. Okay, I'm done with the marketing, blah, blah. Okay, if all of this added up to an exceptional listening experience, I would continue. But it didn't. High pure wire for premium sound. Okay, fine. Let's last point. Let's talk about this. This is what? What did I say? $260? You get this. 3.5 $5 cable. Yes, it's a nice $5, 3.5 single-ended only option cable. But at $260, my question to you and me was, why does this IEM exist? Why, what, why does the origin exist? So I just asked that question, should the Tantrum origin exist? And so I thought I'd shoot this extra little clip here to help you, you know, not waste another 46 minutes uh, with my kind of overall synopsis. If you're thinking about picking this up, I don't think you should waste your $260. And that's a pretty bold statement to make. And that's why there's a whole other part of this video to kind of uh, explain why that is and how I heard it and how did I come to that conclusion, right? So to answer that question though, should this thing exist? No, it shouldn't. Tantrum came late to the table. They brought tuning nozzles that don't do anything um, <clears throat> subjectively. I, I'm not the first person to say that I can't hear a difference. Uh, and on paper, this is the same thing. So does it bring anything unique to the table in design, in technology? No. In fact, it's more backwards. 3.5 single-ended, cheapy cable, um, that kind of things. Does it have sound quality that is as good better or at least at least on par with IMs in its price range or very OD200 <clears throat> BQE uh, YZ wind for instance brings a bone connection driver under this price um, the Dunu Falcon Ultra the Simgot EA1000 the Simgot EA500LM all are below and some qu qu half as much as this I am. Uh, does the resolution of the driver that's used in the origin better? No, the answer to that is no. It is less resolving. It has less quality of base, less base texture. The mids um, don't sound, they sound smooth, and kind of analogy organic, but do are they correct on the timber and tonality? And the answer to that is no, and certainly not compared to the Simgot 500LM, and most definitely not the Dunu Falcon Ultra. Is the highs better, more articulate, uh, better for picking out nuances and micro details? No, it was the worst out of the bunch. So it's the least resolving, the less bass quality, mids were not as tonally accurate, the highs weren't as extended and twinkly um, and gave a sense of air and separation and details. The stage, while it's still allowed to play instruments in its 3D space and allowed them to breathe a bit, simply was that the other two IEMs that did in this comparison outclassed this driver by a long shot. So again, it kind of leads me to this thing at a $269 price point. 
why does the tantrum origin exist? And as we jump further into this uh, video review, you can see how I came to that conclusion. Let's jump into it. Um, I will say one thing that the feedback from them, uh, so I will show you my setup here. Um, I'm not using, I'm not using a uh, 3.5 single ended. I'm using a uh, nice HCK um, SPC cable. Looks really gorgeous on this. I am shell shape design. Primo. I heard some of the complaints with the original oxygen was the very short nozzle and shell shape didn't work for everyone. Well, this is gorgeous. Great shell shape, great uh, bulbous design like we've seen in a couple others that really kind of make the acoustic cavity and the sound profile really what it is. Um... You do get three sets of filters, and again, they spent some time and money where it says Tantrum Origin, uh, Tantrum Electrical Technology Corporation. They have differentiated the three nozzles, three sets of nozzles with a D, uh, an S, and a, what's the other one? So standard, dynamic, and light, right? As others have said, and I'll show you the graph, all three of these don't make a piddly pot difference. Um, Sound-wise, graph-wise, neither. So my first kind of point to Tantrum is why? So first of all, um, you're late to the game. Mm, how many others have come out, including a $22 uh, TRN conch with nozzles with better implementation than you have done f for way, way, way less money? So, okay, I could see that uh, if you did the nozzles, maybe you were going to do different like one would be brass, one would be um, titanium, and another one would uh, be stainless steel to maybe give a little bit sound characteristics. But n none of that happened. Um, nor, and what others, other companies have uh, come to the realization with, uh, including the nice uh, HCK Himalaya, which I haven't Mine hasn't shown up yet. I was hoping to do an A-B with this. Where they've learned, and I provided this feedback to many companies, that if you want to change the specific tuning, stop throwing extra filters or little foamies in here. Change the bore. Just like wide bore ear tips and narrow bore ear tips affect the high frequencies in the bass, well, you can do it in the nozzles. And they didn't do that. So kind of leads me to that question of why do these extra nozzles exist uh, because they don't really do anything and it would add cost and expense and um, it doesn't really make sense so driver quality before I get into sound let's talk about driver quality so we know from the oxygen that this is not an in-house developed driver. This is an off-the-shelf driver that other manufacturers can buy. So this is not something revolutionary or spectacular or special. But I will say that I think the driver quality that's used in the Origin is quite high. Um, is it best in class? Certainly, certainly not. And we'll get into that more to do with sound um, and especially you got to take the price into consideration at $260, right? Um, and later in this video, I'm also going to be doing a shootout and a spider graph to show you kind of my thoughts. And the two that I kind of, I originally was going to pit it up against three, but I, I decided to just kind of, 
I, I, time wise, <laughs> um, I want a life. Um, as I am already spending a great amount of time listening to these guys. Um, untangle, please. You do new cable. I have a love hate relationship with that do new cable. Um, so, my SIM got EA 500 LMs on an RTA5 cable and the Dunu Falcon Ultras on the Dunu cable. And I'm going to do a little bit of a shootout between those two and to give you more of a, a, a snapshot of overall why I think the origin is uh, out of the competition completely. So the shell, and these are all three metal shells. So I thought that was a good comparison, right? So a metal shell, metal shell, um, all fairly small. The um, origin's the largest out of all of the three. Uh, and they all fit me very, very well. And all um, I've got, well, we'll get into that in a little bit. I like metal shells, and I think they add a bit of something, something in the base. Uh, some texture, some hoof, some weight. And I think it does in the origin as well. Um, maybe to a lesser extent than the other two. So... I uh, will also talk about sources, and I'll, I'll, I'll get there right now, actually. So, kind of funny, looking at this graph, um, and if I compared it to the three, uh, definitely the 500LM SimGod has more upper mids, right? Let me switch over to that right now, just so that I can go that uh, with you. And... Let's go punch up the Dunu Falcon Ultra. And I'm putting the, the comparison up uh, with my kind of favorite tunings. And to get it as, you know, how I thought uh, the three uh, compared against each other sound-wise. Now, uh in the falcon ultra blue nozzle so in the three if we look at these graphs they're all there's a little bit of difference in the sub base uh elevation and there's a difference in i mean they're all pretty much bang on to you hit about 3k and that's where the origin uh, with this tuning sounds like it has more upper mids and it looks like it has nice treble and extension where the falcon ultra has a bit of a roll off after 3k and that pretty big sibilance dip at 6 to 7k definitely more so about about 5 db more um than the other two but for the two, the SimGot 500LM and the Origin look very, on paper, very, very close. Um, but they certainly don't sound that way. So in my journey, I started off with uh, my most revealing source. I always kind of, my go-to now is the Astel and Kern um, Con Alpha uh, Max. So that's my go-to dab, very revealing, very musical. Um, and from looking at the graph, I thought, okay, that would probably be a really good pairing. And um, so I spent some time listening to that and then flipped it over to some dongles. I started uh, then using the EPZ TP30 uh, and the TP50. So ESS, Cirrus Logic, I'm doing the whole gamut, and then I listen to it on my Shanling M8 with the uh, 8K44 uh, DAX. So I came to the conclusion that overall, let's put it on one of the most revealing sources and see 
so I, I ended up with the A and K. It was definitely smoother, better than it was um, with the EPZ TP50. This one is super, super analytical. I can't believe how uh, clean and detailed that little dongle is. So, but just giving you a sense of that with the the ANK's ESS DAX, um, I thought it, it definitely brings out the best for details in the Origin. Uh, though, with the Origin, I find it also makes the vocals a bit unnatural, almost forced, uh, and less weight to the mid bass versus uh, switching over to something else like the uh, the Shanling M8. Uh, and kind of what I realized, though, is I think, well, and we'll get into sound, uh, that let's do that right now. And, I mean, the AKM of the S8 is a warmer DAP. Uh, here, where I thought it actually played to the origin strengths, brings out and nurtures the warm kind of organic quality that is the origins i think main strengths uh i think one of the positive things and i'll throw a bone here to the tantrum i think this i am is very good if uh, on poorly recorded music right so let's let's jump into this next segment which is sound and um so when you first listen to something, uh, there's always a honeymoon period. You're enamored with it, and you want you want the best, especially if you've paid two hundred sixty dollars for this. Came with a nice box and case, and presentation was nice. And then you put it in your ears. So my first track was from Massive Attack, called "Everyone." Now. And this impression, I think, is how I hear the origin in a nutshell. I love the replay. Has a really smooth way of playing back music. Natural and with a really nice timber of the notes. And the bass uh, instruments come to play in their own space. In fact, a lot of the instruments do in this kind of uh, stage. Uh, it lets instruments uh, breathe uh, and letting the note finish before blending into the next note. It uh, has a nice musicality to it. Um, and so that was my listening impressions on first track, and I think that carries through. Now, that being said, uh, if you did not have anything to compare it to, um, you would continue on with, I think, that impressions, because you, what is your baseline, right? So, after I did a bunch of listening, and I, thought I got a really good sense of this, I am switching back different sources, throwing out tips coming up with something that to me sounded really good um i was a bit surprised that the upper mids weren't more forthcoming than what it looks like on paper um and that's where graphs lie they they certainly do they can give you an overall snapshot but when you put in ears and your ear anatomy and all that happy jazz um that's for me not how it sounded and it's kind of well known where the sim guts really have more uh upper mids and um not it, it's more vocal forward for sure well let's get into then um verses right so what I did on these track impressions is I listened to the origin first. Then I went and wrote down my impressions, how I thought this sounded. Then I went and I listened to the SimGot 500LM. And the reason I chose the 500LM over the 
EA-1000 is I think it's a better IAM. I think it's their best IAM. I like it better than the EA-1000. So that's why I'm doing it. Um, even though the EA-1000 would be more in its price range, 220 versus 260 it's still. But I'm taking the price out of the equation. I'm just going off of sound, right? So how did the SimGot sound? Well, the SimGot uh, presents more forward, surprisingly or not, more resolving uh, than um, than the Origin. Um, has nicer, tighter bass uh, with more texture to the bass. Uh, stage is even wider and more spacious. Uh, also, the stereo separation is more defined. You can hear... So you can build off of that, my first impression where, you know, instruments are playing in their own space and they're, um, and they're, and you can pick them out in the SimGot, you could do that better. So that was how, and it was, it was a, a kind of an eye opener going, hmm, okay. We just heard a whole bunch of marketing speak about all these things that Tantrum have done. Versus the Falcon Ultra. I'll call it the FU. The Noticeably, the most 3D and by far the best stage. The nicest highs. Uh, loads of details, but not having the edge that the LM does. Bass has the most texture and the most correct weight. Wait a second, you go back to this on paper and it has the least amount of bass and it has the least amount of highs with that big 6 to 7K sibilance dip. But it doesn't sound like that. And that's confirmed uh, over, over, and over again. Um, somebody asked me to compare the uh, Slevo SL41 on the same track, all I can say is the most laid back, less vocal forward. Stage was the least 3D of this IM, but still very wide. Sounded the, probably the most natural, at, uh, except for the origin, and also played back this track really well. <coughs> Next track. Cheap Thrills by Sia. No Mario mix remix. Uh, the origin. How did it sound? Well, it sounded smooth. It sounded great vocals, smooth mids. Bass is great blend of sub bass and mid bass. Um, how did the LM do? Well, the Simgot bass destroys the origin. It's faster. It's tighter. It's more controlled. It's more textured. Um, Seriously, more vocal forward with upper mids. Again, on this tuning, and you look at my graph with the brass nozzles and the red ring, um, certainly doesn't look like it, but that's how it presented. See as vocals pop out. Uh, vocal tonality is um, superior. Bass goes low, too. Um, okay, that does kind of play the sub bass part on the thing is about four four dB more. The sim got goes down and plays it, reaches down and and plays it. Where the both the uh, the Dunu did phenomenal, but the Origin just didn't play it that note at all. Um, how did the Fu do? Well, bass is even more authoritative on the uh, Falcon Ultra. Highs are crisper and add more fun into the mix. Vocals are better on the Simgot uh, on this track, just by a little teeny smidge. Um, but overall, this is on the Dunu, just a better replay even over the LM. Makes the origin feel low res. That's what I wrote. Claire Cadillac by Malia. Her voice is so cool. Uh, the origin. Nice vocals again. Smooth, effortless. The driver is very resolving. And I wrote class leading? Question mark? 
and then a big no. Oh, also, hold on, let's back this up. I forgot that what I wrote these, I also wrote post compare thoughts per track. And so the post compare thoughts to um, on the origin, it was the smoothest replay, less dynamics, does have a laid back groove. Best replay for a chill session, least resolving. So that's how overall, in that track, I felt the origin performed. Back to Claire Cadillac from Malia. Uh, how did the uh, LM do? Well, it's better timber. So the vocals sound more natural. The instruments sound more natural. Um, the stage is better, wider, uh, higher. Vocals are also smoother. How did the Junu do? Well, bass is killer. More 3D. Instrumental is cleaner, defined. Um, the vocals are the best out of the three. Again, on that track. Now let's go to some uh, let's go to some butterflies by Casey Musgraves. The origin uh, again, nice vocals, well balanced, mid centric on this track as it was kind of intended in the recording, and that's a good point because. If we switch over to the Simgot, uh, so now you get the added mid-bass punch and more sparkles give the, uh, the LM a sense of better clarity and more balanced as well as more dynamic. Um, it, it, the, overall, the, it, everything on the LM with this replay and vocals sounded better on the sim god the falcon ultra gives the best sense of the recording and with this i guess i mean that it sounds the most natural um and i get the feeling this was the intended tuning <clears throat> and the reverb effects uh, that are recorded into the mix uh sound like it was replayed the way the track was tuned um if that makes sense it i got a really good sense of uh the recording versus just a a playback there wasn't anything special as much in the simgot or certainly not the origin as what the dunu did for me uh vocals and instrumental was the best out of the three for me for sure best out of the four actually <laughs> keith don't go so this was again a really interesting eye opener uh from niels lofgren um the live recording so i again i wrote unoffensive how many times have i done that pretty much almost all the tracks i kept saying about the origin smooth you know laid back unoffensive nice vocals guitar sounds full but not perfectly defined or crisp just a touch of being smoothed over really even more so than uh if you put this on a warm source uh versus the uh, sim god lm um okay so now i hear the resolving nature of the dynamic driver the details of the plucks, the strings of the guitar that was missing on the origin came out. It's more forward in the vocals, but also benefits the, uh, the Simgot in this case, in this track. And the one point I'm going to make in this track completely is that the quality of the driver, the resolution of the driver is simply superior into the sub $90 Simgot 500LM than it is in the $260 Tantrum Origin. Simply. Um, FU. Best replay, the guitar is killer. The stage, the separation, the details, the dynamics all go to the Dunu. Way better depth and height. Vocals sound like they are recorded on one mic and there is a second or third mic in the recording and the other two have completely missed this effect, right? Um, and again, I'm giving that credit to the dynamic driver and the overall tuning 
and all of the special sauce in that I am um, that the other two were were very far away from the replay that the Dunu Falcon Ultra did. Um, you just missed it completely. Like it sounded like it replayed. And the origin just smoothed everything over, where the Simgot was at least trying to present it uh, the way I think the recording meant it to be. Uh, and the Dunu came to play. Nothing Else Matters by Miley Cyrus. Uh, origin, again, smooth, balance, unoffensive. Um, the LM. Instantly, the piano sounds more natural. Highs and instrumental details come to life vocals pop out bass is next level versus the origin the uh, as the top kind of gets splashy on a on the a and k it did um it pushes my comfort zone very very close um but damn it's really dynamic uh f very fun on this track so versus the falcon ultra the piano now has the a, a next layer of depth and texture the keys you can pull more out that you can hear the piano keys better um and the resonances of the piano keys same thing as the bass lines um it was more uh, realistic sounding the one thing about the Falcon Ultra, again, that I think it gives the most amount of upper details out of these three sets without the upper mid-forwardness of the Simgot uh, and the highs becoming overbearing. And I think that's that 6 to 7K sibilance dip. As the track gets really busy, um, vocals um, still sounded the most natural and correct. So... Even with uh, the, the the track getting super busy, um, it the the Dunu kept its composure. The Simgot started to get a little bit harsh in the top end, and the Origin just kind of na 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 na, -na just happily skipping along. Um, so kind of a bit of in the conclusion here. Um, who would the well, you know what? I'm also going to do a, a spider graph. And on this scoreboard, I went base quality, quantity, mid base, naturalness, timber, tone, dynamics, mids, highs. I based it off of a lot of different things. Smoothness factor, forwardness, resolution, detail, stage, instrumental. Like, how do I think the instrument sounded naturally? Um, vocals, female, vocals, male, value for your money, uh, fun factor, micro and macro uh, details. So lots of different metrics I was comparing. And um, I will put that spider graph in the beginning in the pictures and you can go back to that and check out how that, uh, that it did. So I think in conclusion... Um, to answer my first question, why does the origin exist? Well, honestly, it shouldn't. Um, Tantrum came late to the game. They put in tuning filters that don't actually do anything, so it adds no value to it. Um, they they didn't provide any anything else to like Simgod has a kit. Even way back then with the um, oxygen, they knew that they needed to fix some of their tuning, so they came up with the tuning filters. And I guess some of that was to help condensation issues as well, and they did a little bit of that mitigating, I understand, with this double screen thing. But that being said... Um, if you have to fix something, as that's your, it's a band aid. Really, that's uh, not so much the tuning. And you had a chance to fix it with the swappable nozzles, but you shit the bed. 
So why does it exist? I don't know. Not at $260. Uh, not with this little cable. I think uh, you're too late, Tantrum. You, uh, you came out with something that isn't competitive in its price point. Um, and you, uh, you may have fixed some of the original tunings, but there's nothing, you don't bring anything to the table. The origin doesn't do anything special compared to its competition at significantly less money. One of the drivers, one of the IEMs I wish I had here would have been the Oravetti OD200. And I'm kind of glad I didn't have it. And I'm not going <clears> to... <throat> it, it would have it destroyed this IEM. Like, that one also has a kind of warm, laid-back tuning, but the stage was fantastic. The shell shape was fantastic. The accessories, the leather case, the modular cable, the unboxing experience wipes the freaking floor with the uh, Origin. Um, and it's $80 less money. You could buy the OD200 and the Simgot 500LM for the same price as this Origin. Why does it exist? It's a good question. Um, who is this I am for then? Well, I think that after that little bit of a rant, um, if you still wanted to pick this thing up and you were a diehard fan, okay, I think it's best for people who want an IM for a less intense chill presentation out of all of these IMs I think it would probably do that but again I think the Oravetti is still more musical chill more musical better stage better accessories better fit better shell um, this IM is not going to be for resolution heads not going to be for people looking for the most 3D stage. Um, if you were a fan of rap, reggae, um, and jazz, probably not, because it's just not resolving enough. It doesn't have the bottom end. Can't do the double bass or the piano. Tonally correct. Maybe EDM and pop would be okay, or poorly recorded uh, music. Okay. Uh, people who have a warm source uh, and kind of wanted, again, to play to the kind of smoothed over nature of the uh, origin, then maybe. But again, it's really hard to recommend something that is so kind of uh, outclassed and outpriced in the market um, that... Uh, I, I, I wouldn't put your money there. No, not for this I am. Um, that's for sure. There's a couple brands that I find that are like that. Uh, you know, the the Tang Zhu and the sister company C Audio. I think uh, Tanshim is... Hold on for a second. Well, I love the little Tantrum Zero earbuds that sounded fantastic and they came with this dsp cable that works fantastically and an app so why is that not included with a modular cable and uh or, or a dsp cable or uh a modular cable with a chip in it that could store the uh dsp profiles why is that not in this box for $260? Wouldn't that have made more sense to do that than this with the little tuning nozzles? I think so. Um, anyway, I've kept you long enough, and I thank you for watching my video. But this is the Tantrum Origin, and I think Tantrum... Um, there is some good things here, but uh, you need to go back to the drawing board and uh, come to the table with a 
more competitive uh, offering, um, and especially during uh, these very, very aggressive and competitive uh, tunings that are coming out lately. So this is the monk, and I'm out. Soon to be a drunk monk.